Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be reviewing a real special base. This is my lightly customized Warwick Rock Base Star Base 5 String Fretless. Let's take a look. The hollow body base market has been pretty stagnant for some time. You have your Guild Star Fires, Epiphone Jack Cassidy's like the one I have back there, as well as the Eastwood Replicas. You also have Gresh Bases and other things of the sort, but generally speaking, that segment of the market really hasn't changed much. And feature-wise, they've remained pretty stagnant as well. You usually have a classic style tailpiece, one or two classic style humbuckers, 21 or so frets, and two classic F-holes. One thing you don't usually see though is five string versions of these bases and fretless ones. Well today, we're looking at both in this, the Warwick Rock Bass Star Bass Five String Fretless. Now both the Rock Bass line and the Star Bass have been around for some time. I believe both released in the mid-2000s during the height of Warwick's popularity. Back in the day when you can get a German-made Warwick for 800 bucks. Ah uh, yes, I remember. Well now the higher end Rock Bases are priced where the old Warwick Corvettes used to be. And even the lower end Warwicks are now in the multi-thousands of dollars. Now unlike their German counterparts, these Warwick rock bases are actually constructed in China, 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 China. Though after a close inspection, the quality of these bases is actually pretty okay. In fact, the Warwick China factory is going to be producing the Sadowski RSD bases, which is the new budget Sadowski line priced at around $900. This base features a maple laminate body, maple neck, ebony fretboard, and a gorgeous cream finish. Now normally the vintage cream star base comes with chrome hardware, but I actually swapped this out for gold because I thought it looked a lot better. Now unfortunately the gold MEC humbucker pickups are not available, so I had to stick with the chrome ones for this. I still think it looks pretty good. Now both of these pickups emulate the mudbucker design of the Gibsons, and Warwick is trying to capture a bit of that Gibson and Epiphone hollow body market with this base. Now, unlike the aforementioned Gibson and Epiphone bases, this base features a standard Warwick tailpiece, which is two pieces. You can also control individual string heights and individual intonation. On the other hand, all those Epiphone and Gibson hollow body bases feature their terrible, terrible two or three point bridge design. I simply hate those things and recommend swapping them out for a hip shot ASAP. So from a hardware standpoint, this thing isn't too shabby. The electronics are passive, you have an individual volume and tone for each of the pickups, as well as a three-way pickup selector switch, really nice quality bridge and tuners. What's there not to like? The price tag. These bases are around $1,400 new. That's a lot for a passive Chinese-made base. Though my Epiphone Jack Cassidy was a 2012 or 2013 model and made in Korea, I believe the Jack Cassidy's now are also made in China. They command a much smaller price tag, listing at around $800, which is right about where they were about 10 years ago. Another thing about this base is the odd combination of features. Usually the hollow body players stick to four strings and a fretted instrument. It's really rare to see a classic styled hollow body five string fretless bass like this. Well, let's see how she sounds. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand can turn back to normal. Thanks. So off the bat, these pickups are pretty low output. I had to crank the gain up on my amp a little bit just to get a signal on my USB interface. So overall it doesn't sound bad. It's just kind of low output and not a lot of definition to the sound. Now you have individual tone controls for each of the two pickups, as well as a pickup selector. So let's see what kind of different tones we can get. First, let's look at the neck pickup.
Okay, let's turn the tone down halfway. Now let's turn the tone down all the way. Way, way down. It sounds okay. I mean, there's really not a lot of definition in this pickup, and there's really not a lot of treble for the tone knob to bring down from the get-go. Now let's check out the bridge pickup. This pickup sounds a lot better. It has some really good bite that pairs well with the ebony fretboard. Now let's turn down the tone on this. Mm, not bad. Now let's turn the tone down all the way. Not bad. I feel like they could have used better capacitors in these tone knobs. Now this is what it sounds like in what I think is the ideal configuration for this bass. Just dialing back on the neck pickup a little bit to get that bite from the bridge, and turning down the tone on both pickups just a hair. This is what it sounds like. Now let's talk about the construction of the Warwick Rock Bass Star Bass Fretless 5. Overall, the neck seems really sturdy. It's on the fatter side, but I wouldn't call this neck uncomfortable. The body is pretty comfortable to hold, especially for a hollow body. The really nice Warwick two-piece bridge allows for a great range of customization when it comes to the setup. You can really tune this thing into exactly how you like it. However, tonally, I think this thing is lacking quite a bit. Though playing fretless on a bass like this is a lot of fun, I feel like the novelty would wear off kinda quickly. Speaking of the fretboard, this is some really nice ebony. I know some people like their ebony black black black, but this particular board has some really nice lighter natural stripes on there that I think really add to the overall look of this bass. Finish wise, I think that they did a great job. I don't see any flaws in the paint, and I think they did an even better job with the edges and the fit and finish compared to my Jack Cassidy. However, there are some minor flaws in the binding of this bass. I think the combination of features on this particular instrument is really going to limit the market that it's going to appeal to. Whereas the four string fretted star bass is much more well equipped to go up against the Jack Cassidy as well as the Guild Starfire. Speaking of the Jack Cassidy, let's see how this thing sounds compared to it. Now keep in mind this isn't going to be apples to apples because this is wearing some labella flat wounds whereas the star bass has some dr black beauties now this is how the jack cassidy sounds
And now for good measure, let's bring in the Mexican pea bass. So there's a lot to like about the Warwick Rock Bass Star Bass 5 fretless. It's cool combination of features, it's really nice finish, the beautiful fretboard, but there's also a lot to dislike about it. The mediocre electronics combined with the really high price tag are going to be a big turnoff for a lot of people. That combined with the really niche feature set of this instrument means that it's probably not going to be flying off store shelves anytime soon. This bass is really fun to play, but tonally this thing is lacking a lot. I'd really love to customize this further. No real easy access to the control cavity, so replacing the potentiometers and capacitors is gonna be a pain. I think I'm gonna pass on that. So what am I gonna rate the Warwick Rock Bass Star Bass 5 String Fretless? <sighs> We're gonna rate this bass two claws. I feel like the mediocre electronics and sky-high price tag of this particular instrument leave a lot to be desired here and make it a not great value, especially compared to our $400 Mexican Precision Bass. I think at this price point, better electronics, a more accessible control cavity, and better pickups would be welcome additions, especially since this is nearly twice the price of an Epiphone Jack Cassidy. Well, that's it for today's video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Warwick Rock Bass Star Bass 5-String Fretless or any of the Warwicks. And as always, until we groove again.